Belshazzar was having this grand feast. And the feast that Belshazzar was having with a thousand of his nobles was at a very strange time in his rule and his reign. We know from history that on this particular night, the commander of the Persian army was outside the gates. And Belshazzar was actually surrounded. And tonight would be the last night of his reign, but he didn't know it yet. And he's having this feast even though his city is surrounded. And he really believed that he was going to survive this particular event for two reasons. Number one, he was in this impenetrable city. We looked at the city last week with its high walls and its thick walls. You couldn't, you couldn't go over the walls. You couldn't go through the walls. You couldn't go under the walls and capture the city. How the river of Euphrates ran through the city. You couldn't starve them out. They had 20 years worth of provisions in their barns. And now they had watchtowers, and so you couldn't fire, you couldn't go over the walls, and they had bronze gates, so you couldn't burn the city out. And so Belshazzar felt very safe in this magnificent ancient city. The second thing that we noticed in verse 4 and 5 is that he praised the gods, it says, the gods of gold and silver and bronze and iron and wood and stone. In other words, he did all of his religious acts. He, he appeased all the gods that he knew of. And so now he could relax. He was in this impenetrable city and he had appeased all the gods. And so he felt safe. He's felt safe. If we skip ahead in chapter 5 just for a minute, let's, let's talk about what Daniel sees, because Daniel comes and he talks to the king, and this is what he says. I mean, chapter 5, verse 23. It says, but you, king, have exalted yourself. You see the words there? Exalted yourself, what? Against the Lord. It's one thing if I live my life apart from the God of heaven. For all of us, the goal is to walk with alongside in partnership with the God of heaven sometimes I turn and I manage my life based on my own agenda and so I'm living my life apart from the God of heaven but Daniel describes Belshazzar here as setting his life what against the God of heaven that I know what God wants me to do. I know in the bottom of my heart, I know in the back of my mind, I know what God declares, I know what God is trying to do in my through my life, but I am just resisting it, and I'm actually, it says here, putting my face in God's face, and we are gonna go at it from them. Remember the story in chapter one, where Nebuchadnezzar came and conquered Jerusalem and he went into God's temple and he took out all of the instruments, all of the cups and the chalice and the instruments that were used in worship and he brought them out of Jerusalem and he carried them off to Babylon and in the city of Babylon he had a temple to his god Marduk and he put all of those utensils into the treasury of his god and by doing so declaring Marduk my god is more powerful than Daniel's god because Daniel's god couldn't stop me from doing it.